Hi guys, this is another video where I'm gonna go through some practice questions from my SAA C02 practice test course for the Solutions Architects Associate exam. So we recently released over 100 new questions to our pool. We got over 600 questions in the pool. So these are specifically around the CO2 exam. So if you're preparing for that exam, this is gonna help you get an idea of what to expect. So let's have a look at this question. An RDS read replica is being deployed in a separate region. The master database is not encrypted, but all data in the new region must be encrypted. How can this be achieved? Okay, so before I look at the answers, let's just analyze the question in a bit more detail. So we've got a read replica that needs to be deployed in a separate region, or it's being deployed in a separate region. The master database is not encrypted but all data in the new region must be encrypted. So as you hopefully know, you can't have an encrypted read replica of an unencrypted master database. It's just not possible. So if you have an encrypted master database, then you can have an encrypted read replica. So that's kind of what I'm gonna be looking for in this question. Now, the other thing to bear in mind before we start looking at the answers is you can't just enable encryption for an existing database. So the answer needs to include that we're going to create an encrypted version of the database, the master database, and then create a read replica. So let's go through these. Enable encryption using a key management service when creating the cross-region read replica. You can't do that. You, you can't just choose a KMS key and create an encrypted read replica when your master database is not encrypted. Encrypt a snapshot of the master DB instance create an encrypted cross-region read replica from the snapshot. Well, you can definitely take a snapshot of the master DB instance and encrypt it, but you can't create a read replica from a snapshot. You create the read replica from the live master database. Enable encryption on the master DB instance, then create an encrypted cross-region read replica. Well, as I just mentioned, you can't enable encryption for the master DB instance. So you can't then just create a cross-region read replica that is encrypted as well. So the last one is encrypt a snapshot from the master DB instance. That's possible. Create a new encrypted master DB instance. So you can do that from the snapshot. So you're basically taking a snapshot of the instance of the live master DB instance you're then encrypting that snapshot. You're then creating a new DB instance from that encrypted snapshot. So you've now got a new master DB instance. It has a new endpoint and everything. And then you create a encrypted read replica that's cross region from that new master database. So that sounds possible. That's definitely something you can do. So watch out for these. They come up quite a bit in the exam. And sometimes the wording's a little bit tricky and it makes you think, well, can I enable encryption from the API or can I do it, you know, some other means? You can't. Once you've created the database, you can't enable encryption. So you've got to do something else. You've got to create an encrypted version of your database. And that means taking a snapshot, encrypting it, creating a new DB instance from the encrypted snapshot, and then you have encryption. So let's just check this one. Sure enough, that's correct. So let's move on. A solutions architect is designing an application on AWS. The compute layer will run in parallel across EC2 instances. The compute layer should scale based on the number of jobs to be processed. And it's a stateless compute layer. The architect must ensure that the application is loosely coupled and the job items are durably stored. Okay, so we've got a compute layer running across different EC2 instances and it's stateless and it needs to scale based on the amount of jobs that need to be processed. So let's have a look at what we could use here for this. So create an SNS topic to send the jobs that need to be processed, create an auto scaling group for the compute application and set the scaling policy for the auto scaling group to add and remove nodes based on CPU usage. So it says here that the compute layer should scale based on the number of jobs to be processed. So not the CPU usage. Now this is another question where you can see that the general structure of the answer is almost identical. So I like to then sort of scan through and try and work out what's the same and what's different. 
So the first sentence here, create an SNS topic to send the jobs that need to be processed. Well, then we have the same at the bottom, and then we have create an SMS queue, an SQS queue to hold the jobs that need to be processed. So we've got to choose between SNS and SQS, and then work out you know whether it's one of these two SQS answers or one of these two SNS answers. Now, because we're talking about processing jobs, I'm thinking SQS rather than notifications. So it's more likely to be one of these. So let's look at the difference between these. Well, so we've got an SQS queue holding the jobs. We've got an EC2 auto scaling group for the compute application that will definitely scale. And how do we scale that EC2 auto scaling group? So in this case, we're setting the scaling policy to add and remove nodes based on network usage. Well, again, that's not the amount of jobs to be processed. And then the next one is almost identical, but we're adding and removing nodes based on the number of items in an SQS queue. Well, that makes a lot more sense now. So now the amount of jobs that are in the queue determine the policy or trigger the policy for the auto scaling group as to whether it needs more or less compute power. So that makes a lot of sense. So let's just make sure that we've we've not sort of discounted those other two answers. I definitely don't think the network usage is good. Um, the SQS queue sounds like a lot of sense, and I, I prefer SQS anyway for this job. Let's just check out this SNS topic. So this last one here said it's going to add and remove nodes based on the number of messages published to the SNS topic. Well, I don't know that you can do that. So I could be wrong, but I don't think you can do that. And anyway, I'm definitely liking this answer. So in this case, we've got an auto scaling group and you can configure that auto scaling group to scale based on the number of jobs. You've got a lot of jobs in the queue, then you can add more instances. If there aren't any jobs in the queue, then you can remove some instances. So I like that answer. Let's check. And that's the correct answer. And so it gives me a bit of more information about how you might go about doing this. So in this case, you can configure something called the backlog per instance metric, and then you can specify the acceptable backlog per instance. So how many jobs are waiting per instance? And that's what you can then use to determine when to add or remove instances. So let's click on next. A solutions architect is creating a document submission application for a school. The application will use S3 buckets for storage the solution must prevent accidental deletion of the documents and ensure that all versions of the documents are available. Users must be able to upload and modify documents. Okay, so in this case, we're storing, we're submitting documents. They're going to an S3 bucket and we have to prevent accidental deletion. So prevent accidental deletion, not recover from it, but prevent it in the first place. But we also need to ensure that all versions of the documents are available and users need to be able to upload and modify. So let's go through these. We've got two answers that we need to select. So set read-only permissions on the bucket. Does that work? Well, yeah, it's gonna stop people deleting them, but users need to be able to modify documents, so read-only is not gonna work. Enable versioning. Well, enable versioning works. That's definitely gonna mean that we can create, or we can keep all versions. So for now, I'm gonna select that one. Attach an IAM policy to the bucket. Okay, but what are you gonna do in that policy? So how are you going to be able to meet these requirements just using an IAM policy? Well, I'm not sure about that one, so let's move on. Enable MFA delete on the bucket. Well, if you now have MFA delete enabled, then no one can delete anything in the bucket without having a multi-factor authentication device. So that's definitely going to be something that you can use to prevent deletion of objects from the bucket. And the last one is encrypt the bucket. So encrypting it is not really gonna work here. So SSE S3 is server-side encryption using S3 encryption keys. And that just means that it's gonna be encrypted when you upload something, when you download it, it gets decrypted and it's all pretty much seamless to you. So that's gonna encrypt the data, but it's not gonna help you, or it's not gonna stop you from deleting the data or assist with making sure that the versions of the data are available. So that's not gonna work either. So I think MFA delete to prevent the deletion and versioning to ensure that you get all versions of the document. So let's check. And those are the correct answers. So let's move on to one more. 
A multi-tier application runs with eight front-end web servers in an auto-scaling group in a single AZ behind an ALB. A solutions architect needs to modify the infrastructure to be highly available without modifying the application. What architecture should the solutions architect choose that provides high availability? So it's simply a case here where we've got a bunch of web servers in a single availability zone. They're auto-scaling at the moment and they have an ALB, but they don't have high availability because they're not across multiple subnets or they're not across multiple availability zones. They're in a single availability zone. So what do we do? Create an auto-scaling group that uses four instances across each of two regions. Well, that would certainly give you some HA, but your load balancer can't split the traffic between regions. So modify the auto-scaling group to use four instances across each of two availability zones. Well, that makes sense. And all you really need to do in your auto-scaling group is just add a subnet that's in another availability zone and auto-scaling will automatically rebalance your workload. So we're not modifying the application and we're going to enable HA and that will work with our load balancer. So I like that answer. We then have create an auto-scaling template that can be used to quickly create more instances in another region. Well, that's not really very automated. So I wouldn't say that that's the best HA. You know, that's not really HA. It's more disaster recovery. So I don't like that answer. Create an auto-scaling group that uses four instances across each of two subnets. Well, where are those subnets? They could be in the same availability zone. So this one here does specify two different availability zones. So that's definitely, to me, the, the answer that's got the, it fulfills all requirements there. And we know that we're then gonna have HA across AZs. So let's click on check. So that's the right answer. And there's a diagram, it would look something like this. So you've got your internet gateway, your application load balancer, and then you've got a few instances in two different subnets and your auto scaling group is maintaining that workload. And again, the auto scaling group will automatically balance your load once you add in a subnet that's in another availability zone. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope that helps you prepare for your exam. And I'll be doing another video 